Um, hello, my name is Margaret Christian, and today I'm going to share the story of an innovation called the MSP Multiple Stitch Producing Device. It all started two years ago during a shadowing opportunity in Robert, Wan Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. It's not often that you get the chance to see someone be brought back to life, but I saw cardiothoracic surgeons do this every day. During valve surgery operations, cardiothoracic surgeons administer a cold potassium solution in order to stop the heart. Once the heart is stopped, the surgeon performs valve surgery, and the surgeon places the patient on what's called a cardiopulmonary bypass machine, which takes over the role of the heart and the lungs while the heart is resting. Once the, once the surgery ends, which takes approximately 40 minutes, the heart starts up again without any external electrical stimulus. All that's needed is a little bit of warmth. The heart begins to quiver, and within a few moments, it regains its normal function as it begins to contract and relax and begin pumping blood. When I first saw this, I couldn't, I couldn't help thinking of the words in the Bible, Lazarus, come forth. As I saw more and more valve surgeries, astonishment increasingly gave way to quiet confidence. I had seen these surgeons stop and restart the heart so many times that I didn't suspect that anything could go wrong. That is, until one day, in a particular case, the heart did not restart. The operating room was completely silent. The staff looked on anxiously, hoping to see the heart quiver and respond. The surgeon repeatedly defibrillated the heart, but to no avail. The heart was silent. In this particular case, the valve surgery had taken 50 minutes, while typical valve surgeries only take 40 minutes. How could 10 minutes make such a vast difference? Well, as I mentioned earlier, during valve surgery, patients are placed on the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. Now this machine supplies oxygenated blood to the entire body, to every organ except the heart. So during the span of the heart valve surgery time, the heart has absolutely no oxygen supply. This is where the cold potassium solution kicks in. By stopping the activity of the heart and by cooling the heart, the potassium solution reduces the energy and oxygen demand of the heart muscle cells. However, since cellular activity is not fully stopped, Cutting off the oxygen supply causes the heart muscle cells to become damaged. The greater the valve surgery time, the greater the time of oxygen deprivation, and the greater damage these muscles sustain. As a result, after valve surgeries, sometimes the heart does not restart. Clearly, time is of the essence. This event motivated me to pursue a device that I had first ima imagined shortly after seeing my first valve surgery. You see, during valve surgeries, surgeons place what is called an annuloplasty ring, which is a small loop used to reinforce the shape of the valve. In order to insert this ring, surgeons must place 15 to 20 stitches around the periphery of the valve using a needle holder. When I saw the first valve surgery, I was stunned because I realized then that it took so long to make each individual stitch. Additionally, what was so surprising was that the stitches needed to be placed in the same elliptical pattern in every situation in order to match the shape of the annuloplasty ring. I couldn't help but think to myself, why hasn't this process been mechanized yet? So for several weeks after seeing the first valve surgery, I spent the time in order to design a device called the MSP that can make multiple stitches at once and reduce the time required by valve surgeons to place these peripheral stitches and insert the annuloplasty ring. Currently, surgeons require 15 to 25 minutes to make these peripheral stitches. But with the use of my innovation, the MSP, this can be reduced to as little as five minutes. When I saw the case in which, this, which the patient's heart did not restart, I knew that the MSP had the potential to make the difference between life and death. And it was then that I realized that I had to pursue this device. And so, I set to work with a few simple materials that you can find around the house, including cardboard and hot glue gun. 
I built a very simple breadboard model in order to establish the proof of concept of the device. In November 2012, I, I was awarded a provisional patent for my design, and then I went on over the span of the next year to compete in innovation competitions such as New Work Innovation Acceleration Challenge, NGIT TechQuest, and Capital One Cross Campus Challenge in order to raise money to fund the development of this device. Soon after, I partnered with three of the brightest minds in NGIT's biomedical engineering department, Pooja Sheth, Alexis Ipecchi, and Louis Ordinivia, in order to help and work with them to prototype the MSP device. Soon after, with the breadboard model in hand, my team and I went to St. Barnabas Hospital in order to pitch our design and our idea to Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, the head of the Department of Surgery, so that we could convince him to join our scientific advisory board and give us clinical advice in designing our device. This past summer, we started developing the first physical prototype of our device, and we were advised by Dr. Ronald Chamberlain and Dr. Paul Burns of St. Barnabas Hospital and Dr. William Hunter of NGIT's biomedical engineering department. We expect to finish our first prototype by the end of the fall 2013 semester. I realized something very important while analyzing my story about how this innovation came forth. Innovations are one of the most sought after currencies. They are pursued relentlessly by academia and educational facilities and companies alike. And this may, this may mislead us into thinking that innovation can only be found in the minds of the individuals who work in the research and development organizations of these multi-million dollar corporations. But this is not true. One of the most important ingredients for innovation is naivete. And this is something that I and many students have in abundance. When I first walked into the OR, I had absolutely no knowledge about surgical practices. It was for this reason that I was alarmed when I noted how long it took to make these stitches. I hadn't accepted the practices as they were. Rather, I saw the potential for change, and I realized the need for improvement. This was what set me on my journey, and hopefully it will inspire you to begin yours. In the words of Steve Jobs, stay hungry, stay foolish. Thank you.